I was in New Orleans for New Year's Eve one year and I had a friend who she kept going on about there are these gigantic rodents brought over here from Argentina as this cheap alternative to fur coat. And then all of a sudden their numbers were just completely out of control. And so people are eating them, people are wearing them, all of these different things we've tried to get rid of them. And I just couldn't believe what she was telling me. That was where the kind of seed was planted. We just realized here was another unusual story. Head to Louisiana, meet these people that were living kind of on the edge of the world. Please welcome up the filmmakers to Rodents of Unusual Size, Chris, Quinn, and Jeff. Thanks, man. Our approach to documentary is, well, you never really know what the movie's gonna be. And I think that was part of the fun of exploring, letting the people in the environment tell us what the film is gonna be. Yeah, I think one of the things we were trying to decide early on is like how much of this would be a movie about Nutria. We wanted to see how far we could kind of push exploring, you know, the kind of culture of Louisiana that is lost. Louisiana's coastal wetlands are very fragile. It's the highest rate of erosion in the contiguous United States. It also provides protection from storm surge and hurricane surge. Nutria is one cause that exacerbates the environmental processes that take place. A lot of these areas that are impacted by Nutria and eventually convert to open water they become lost, and they are lost forever. When we started making this film, there was this tax credit in Louisiana that created a situation where there were actually 30 reality shows being filmed down there at one time. Six Americans wage war on a foreign invader. There was even a Nutria show called Rat Bastards. And so people were really used to TV crews coming and caricaturing them, blowing their stories up, and kind of making fun of them. We were always kind of worried about access. Will these people let us into their lives? And actually, it was surprisingly easy. And I think a lot of that has to do with just being an authentic person with a genuine interest in their lives. When I was 13 years old, I quit school to be a fisherman. My education is deceit. I think that really shows, and I think people sense that. When I look out now, it looks like a disaster. All the grass, they clean it like a baseball field. I reckon Katrina took my house, but we still had plenty of neutral. And that's why they got a bounty, $5 for this tail. The first day that we went, it's a whole armada of people. They're just killing hundreds of nutria. And that day, I, I thought, I've made a terrible mistake. I mean, they're, they're bigger, there are more of them than I ever imagined. They're just like blood splattering everywhere, and Jeff's just up there, they're just cutting off that tail. Yeah, I got about 80 this week. And uh, helps pay the bills, you know? But the thing that really stuck with me was that? how much pride people were taking in protecting their natural environment. You ain't gonna eat no more grass now. All my family is from over here. But if the land's gone, then me and my family don't have a future. I don't think anybody takes pleasure in, you know, animal necessarily losing his life, but animal lovers or vegetarians often are like, I was really reluctant to come see this movie, but now that I understand the situation, I understand that there's these different trade-offs involved, and I understand why we need to eliminate the nutria. We had got something in common, me and the nutria. He's a survivor like me, you know, he wants to survive. And I think the thing that really kind of attracts us to these sorts of stories is that the characters in our films allows you to kind of explore this subjective notion of what success and failure is. I had a five bedroom house, let's go. You know, they're living in an area where they know they're gonna get hit by hurricanes, you know, every decade or so. We survive, but it's not easy people would say, well, why in the world would you continue to live there? But the thing is, they've actually found this kind of paradise. It's a place that they know and that they love. They take a bad situation and make something really good out of it. It's their resilience and the way that they deal with all this. It's really taught us a lot about, you know, just to, how to be a better person in a way. Hey, hey, everybody. We've been traveling around the United States with this film for a while, so it's exciting to be able to bring it back home. Mr. Thomas, come and join us. <laughs> To finally share it with the people who are actually in the film is just incredibly exciting. 
I really hope that they can say, yes, that is me. That is my experience. Man, so what did you think of the movie? Pretty good, man. I didn't think y'all could do it that good. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty good, good I enjoyed it, yeah. <laughs> We, I think, succeeded in capturing this moment in time. Louisiana isn't going to be the same five years from now. And we saw it change over the four years that we were there. We saw a lot of land disappear. We saw a lot of people moving away. I called another guy. He's like, I'm good, but if you want to talk to the king of the Nutria Hunters, you got to call Thomas. The himself. relationships, the friendships that we built. I'm just proud of the fact that this movie captures the spirit of who these people are. Rain and in New Orleans. This is our film studio where all the magic happens. Early on, we imagined we could go underground with a nutria, and we discovered someone that had a trained nutria. Nudie the nutria is her name. <laughs> oh, the eating's good. Yeah. And we decided to build the kind of a whole set, put her in the tunnels to capture a subterranean environment for a nutria. 